two, one. So welcome in. So AC transformers. So when you're studying foundational physics and you finally get into the electromagnetism and kind of the last component is probably gonna be transformers. So what exactly are these transformers? And typically if this is foundational, so for example, in grade 11 or something similar, then it will be really one of the first times that you'll see and do some numerical calculations uh, with regards to electromagnetism. So maybe you've done a little bit on the electricity side, on the magnetism side, on the foundations, you know, maybe not as much, but you certainly can do some, and it's not very difficult in this case for transformers. So what in the world are these transformers? Um, they only actually work for AC currents, and that is because AC allows us a changing magnetic field. So I want to bring you back. If you are thinking of you know, inducing a current in some kind of a conductor, you might think back of Faraday, and Faraday did an experiment with this iron ring or Faraday's ring. So you can see that on the screen and I can put up a link up above there if you wanna be able to see the discussion on it. And what happens is Faraday has noticed that if he took this particular ring and then he wound it up, so notice that there's windings, okay, on the one side, there is no connection between one side and the other, so there is no conductor which is actually attached, so there's no wire which um, carries on, but we do have windings on the other side of this ring as well, and then maybe it carries on, and you know, maybe you have some kind of a circuit on the other side. Now Faraday actually, you know, let's say, took some kind of a DC, so maybe a battery in here. And what was noticed is that when you close the circuit, then you would induce an actual voltage on the other side. So that would happen whenever you would close this down, but it would happen momentarily. And the reason for that is because when you close this right here, your magnetic field that will be created is going to momentarily change. It's going to come from nothing because the circuit is not closed, so there is no actual current which is flowing, and that current can, if there's no current, you know, we can't induce a magnetic field. But if you do close the circuit, then you will change the magnetic field, at least momentarily, and therefore it will induce on the other side, you know, a voltage. And that induction, okay, of the voltage came to kind of a realization that, hold on a second, if we are gonna be changing things, well, in AC currents, unlike a battery, which is DC, well, it doesn't just happen that the change happens when you close the circuit. If you do close the circuit and you have an AC current, which is continuously changing, so you know, it's going up and down and up and down and etc. so it's changing directions back and forth, which means that it is continuously changing a magnetic field around here and therefore changing a magnetic field around here. And if you are continuously changing this, then you can continuously induce a current which is on the opposite side. So that is very interesting. And what we have kind of seen, and you can see this right on top here, that it turns out and I will write here, so this is the voltage on the primary side, so this would have been the voltage on the primary side. This will be known as the voltage on the secondary side, so this is the voltage on the secondary side. So primary, this is where you are feeding the actual current, and then this is the secondary side, and that will be where you are inducing the actual current and voltage. So that is primary and that is secondary. And of course, you can have a primary, which is the current, which goes through here, and then you can have a current on the secondary, which goes through here. Now, I want you to kind of forget about the current for the moment. What has been noticed, and this is happens in nature, so this is what we have noticed when we actually run these experiments, is that if you forget about current for a moment and you have a certain primary voltage, so this would have been the voltage on this side, then what happens is you're gonna be inducing a voltage, if the magnetic field is changing, on the secondary side. So therefore, so this particular change, okay, and the in, in induced voltage 
is actually related to the number of windings that you have. So notice that we can keep winding this down around the iron core, right, or iron ring. We can just keep winding it and we can have more and more on one side. And then we can wind this down as well. So we can keep winding this down, okay, as many times as you like. And it turns out that you have this relationship between the voltages and the windings. So notice that this would have been a winding on this side and this would have been a winding on this side. So let me actually show you because we very often don't necessarily use these actual rings um, much, but we do kind of have an iron core, which a little bit more looks like this. So this is the kind of transformer that we would have. So we have this iron ore, so it acts as the fact that we can keep these windings within here. It makes our windings a lot easier as we're going through, but it also increases and induces the magnetic field change um, a little bit better if we do have an iron kind of a, a core inside there. And then we have windings on the opposite side. So this would have been your secondary. So notice I've labeled everything now right here so that you can see and relate it back. And the relationship between here is that the actual voltages and the windings are kind of proportional to each other. So we have this relationship, which is that the voltages that we have, so this is V on the primary, V on the secondary, is equivalent to the windings that we have on each. And this is just directly through experiments that we notice. So now you might say, okay, well, you know, that's great. Um, you know, we have this relationship. Now, why is this actually useful? Well, the useful item is that if we do have an AC current, then we can keep inducing this secondary voltage and then also have a current which is gonna flow if we do attach something on the right-hand side. But the power is, depending on the ratio right here between the windings, we can actually change the voltages. So if you notice this, if you have a certain voltage here and a certain of windings here, now if you reduce the number of windings on the other side, so if it's less, then all of a sudden, then you can see that you're going to have kind of a step down in voltage. And we call this a step down transformer where we have a higher voltage and then we can bring down the voltage if we like, just by controlling the number of windings. If on the other hand, we increase the number of windings, we can actually step up the voltage. So we can increase the voltage, right, that we have. Now it does come at a cost. And where this comes in, is in this particular equation, we can now relate it back into actually power and the law of kind of conservation of energy. So where exactly do these transformers and these equations come from? So I'm gonna move this on the side and I just wanna be able to show you. It's not very difficult. Now, please remember that we have power, which is equal to voltage times current, can put up a link up above there if you've forgotten it. So within here, if I know that on the left-hand side, and let's assume that we don't have really any losses, that power on the primary side is gonna be equal to the power on the secondary side, right? So that's what I would have. Now, power is just your actual voltage times whatever your current might be, and this is equal to your actual voltage on the secondary side, and this would be on the current on the secondary side. So that is just coming in from the derivation or kind of the definition of power for circuits. And if you have this, right, then you can very easily now take this particular equation and let me move the voltages around. So notice that VP, I can divide both sides by VS, so I'm gonna be moving that around and what I'll get is that this is gonna be IS, okay? And I'm gonna shift over the current. Notice that it is inversely proportional to each other. So I have just simply taken this, I've brought this down in here and I've taken this and I've brought it down over here. So that's why you see it over there. So notice that this, okay? So the current, okay? And the voltage are inversely proportional to each other. 
Now, the power of this is the fact in the idea if you want to step up or step down the voltages. Sometimes we want to step up the voltages, especially if we are kind of creating electricity in general. So we want to have a flowing current, but we are, you know, going over really long, huge distances. So this is maybe from a power generator and then it's traveling into cities. Well, we don't want to have a lot of current because we're going to have quite a bit of losses. Now, in the ideal world, right, if there was no resistance in the conductors themselves, we wouldn't have any losses and we can just carry it on, you know, through miles and miles, but that's not reality. So what we love to do is, you know, step up the voltages quite a lot because that means if we step them up, then the current will decrease, all right? And the current will be decreasing um, because of the fact that they are inversely proportional. So notice this is primary, this is secondary, but here they're reversed, right? So this is the inverse proportionality that we would have. All right, so, well, now notice that if we have VP over VS, well, that's VP over VS over here. So that's why, you know, I can steal this out and this equation is typically, you know, I'm going to add this up to the equation, and this is exactly what you see over here. Now, most students, especially in the beginning, when they're just studying this, I just want to be able to remember the equation and then, you know, go off with it. So this is the idea of transformers. So the whole idea is that we want to be able to change. We can step up or step down the actual voltages, which means we can also step up or step down the currents from a primary side to a secondary side. So that's the ultimate idea. Uh, and the word transformer means kind of change, right? So we are changing one to another. If it would turn out that the number of coils here is the same as the number of coils here, then NP over NS, so that would be just equal to one, which means that the actual voltages would be identical. So we wouldn't be doing any stepping up or stepping down. The bigger interest is in transformers is if we want to be able to reduce the voltages, okay, or increase the voltages from one side to another. Now, this of course is in the ideal world that there are some losses, so it's not perfect, um, but it's pretty close um, depending on, you know, how closely wound, okay, and nicely these transformers are built out. And now if you wanted to see a real transformer, you can certainly put it up Okay, on a search engine, which I'll do right now. So <laughs> here you go, okay, so notice I just put it up in a search engine right here. You can do your, your favorite one. Uh, I do like, you know, so here you can see these transformers. They're on poles, on, a, on electrical poles, you know, where the electricity is traveling, and then we might wanna be able to actually step down the voltages as they come to our houses. You know, you have the voltages and they're in thousands, okay, coming out from the actual generators, power generators way back. But of course, that's not what we want to have coming into our houses. You know, so typically in North America it might be 120 volts, okay, in Europe it's a little bit bigger, um, but you are using these transformers. So here's a, a look at some, you know, so our standard transformer. Uh, so the one actually at the bottom right uh, is a cool one. You can see there that, you know, it has its windings all the way around, okay, in the background. So although you can see that it's on some kind of a plastic, but there is an iron core there, okay, if you look close enough, which is really cool. And, you know, you can kind of keep scrolling down in here and you have numerous transformers all the way throughout. So let's kind of end the video with an example so that you can see that this really isn't a very hard process. So in this example, let's you know take a look and see what we can calculate uh, within here. So we have a transformer on the primary side has 80 windings and we have that. So that would have been on the left-hand side. The AC maximum voltage is 120. Now again, remember AC kind of goes up and down and changes and that would mean, so within here, so this is 120 volts, 80 windings, all right. Uh, part A, if the circuit is closed, then what voltage would we see on the secondary side if the number of windings on the secondary side is only 10? So we only have 10 windings over here. So it's not, you know, very difficult. So please remember, you know, your equation is VP divided by, you know, VS. 
and that is equal to the number of windings on the primary side divided by the number of windings on the secondary side. Well, we know pretty much what the peak is. So this is 120 volts. Um, we're trying to find out what the voltage is on this side. The primary side has 80. The secondary side has only 10. So that's going to be actually just equal to 8. So now if you want to be able to solve this, you know, we can move this VS okay, out of the denominator. So that's going to give us 120 volts on the left, which is equal to 8 VS on the right and then just divide by 8. So Vs is going to be equal to 120 volts divided by 8. And you know now we can pop out our calculator and see exactly what will happen. So it's you know the voltage maximum is 15. So what have we done? We've stepped down the voltage. Right? So the voltage has been stepped down. And what that will mean is what will step up is the current, right? Because there has to be okay, kind of an inverse proportion in here. And I think that's what they ask in part B. So in part B, it says, if it is observed that the secondary current has a peak of 2.5 amps, actually, so that's not that much, then it's not drawing a lot okay, of current. So maybe it's um, something a little bit smaller, though 2.5 amps is certainly not tiny. Okay, It is actually you know, pretty large. Uh, relative. Then what current must be flowing on the primary side? So for part B, so what we have, we're interested in really in this. So we can use whatever information that we like, right? So they said, so within here, the secondary side, so the peak, okay, is 2.5 amps, okay, this is going to be IP, uh, is equal to, notice, the NP over NS, which we have just done already, so that's just going to be equal to eight. So now once again, you know, if you're going to be solving this, it's going to be 2.5 equals to eight IP, and then just divide by eight on both sides within there. And there you have it. You can again, take out your calculator, 2.5 divided by eight. Okay, so it's not very nice. So I'll keep it, you know, let's say 0.3 keep it to one significant figure in here, or actually, well, we have the two, so maybe eight, eight, three, one amps. So notice, you know, the current is much smaller on the primary side, but the voltage is bigger, right? Um, but if you compute and you wanted to find out what the power is on the, on the primary side and the, what the power is on the secondary side, they'll be identical, right? Because that's exactly what we are using for, to find these particular equations. So there you have it, you know, so here's, you know, an example and in an introduction to transformers. I think as a student, you know, you like to do a little bit of calculations. These are much, much easier. So it's not hard to be able to compute and you can now understand kind of how power is transferred, right from a power generator side, and then you know, comes into the city, you know, they do use transformers to try to actually reduce the, num the, the current itself that flows throughout. And the reason is because we want to reduce okay, losses. All right, so thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you in another video. Bye everybody.